I now invite our young administrator from the district of Bijnor in Uttar Pradesh, Mr. Bikramaditya Singh Malik, a 2018 batch IAS officer, uh, who is at the forefront of this battle against the COVID. Over to you, Mr. Bikramaditya Singh Malik. Thank you so much, Mr. Mishra, and uh, a very good afternoon to all respected seniors and everybody who's partaking in this session. Um, the challenge for the last speaker of the day is that most of the topics that you know I had in mind have already been spoken about by much more experienced civil servants than I am. Uh, so I have uh, very little to add to them, but uh, what I can do is try and give some small examples of the points that have already been spoken about by uh, respected seniors prior to me. Uh, what we saw during this uh, second wave uh, of the pandemic was, uh, which has already been mentioned by Sonal Goyal ma'am and then Rajkumal sir, was an unprecedented collaboration or convergence between the private and the public sector. And in this, I'd like to talk about the role of uh, civil servants in acting as a facilitator or, uh, you know, implementer of sorts in ensuring this convergence. So, uh, Bijnor is a mostly rural district with a very different demographic divide uh, or a composition uh, as compared to other districts uh, which have been mentioned here. So, uh, the challenge that we faced was again uh, that we were trying to do firefighting, uh, we are fighting a pandemic, a disaster and upgrading our health infrastructure at the same time. But our constraints were that number one, uh, upgradation of infrastructure doesn't help, doesn't happen overnight. And as we all know, our uh, the allocation for our health budget out of the GDP is about 1.52 percent per year out of percent of the GDP, in which the government is increasing, but it doesn't happen overnight. So what we did need in terms of in terms of resources was convergence between the private and the public sector. And uh, the second uh, challenge that we had was how to implement this. So uh, as a civil servant, traditionally. Uh, known to have an anonymous sort of a, a figure and an uh, anonymous face working behind the scenes. Uh, that role, I believe, this pandemic has changed. What we saw was even senior bureaucrats, politicians, businessmen uh, being on the same level. The pandemic was a leveler in terms of access to resources, in terms of access to beds, oxygen, supply, etc. So, uh, in that people with a good social capital and people with a good network capital sort of could help uh, augment the system and synergize the private and the public together. So the example that I'm trying to come at is we had done a project in Bijnor called Bikes of Bijnor, which uh, we sort of reached out through uh, social media and we got some attraction uh, a bit on the national level. It was because of that project that a lot of these fundraisers and organizations approached us during the second wave of the pandemic and they said that, you know, we know that this, there is a good team in Bijnor, we know, we have the funds. There were two kinds of organizations as we all know. There was one, the Imkun Foundation kind of organization who were, they were trying to directly implement their works on the ground, have parallel hospitals, have, you know, oxygen supply network and give it through a private source. The other was a you know, a set of fundraisers and private organizations who had the resources, who had the capability of getting oxygen concentrators, BiPAP machines, cylinders, oxyflometers, ICU beds, but they did not have the capacity to implement it. So there came our role as facilitators. I can name at least two, three organizations that got in touch with me on their own and they said, you know, everybody is helping Delhi, everybody is helping Bombay. We want to help a rural area where not much help is reaching, where you do not have the health infrastructure. All we need is a credible source uh, in terms of an efficient bureaucracy who will ensure that this help reaches the right places. So here we were acting as a facilitator between, you know, we got this from these networks who approached me post by of Bijnor, we got 100 oxygen concentrators in the, in the thick of the wave. Now we have many organizations like PTM Foundation and Bill and Melinda Gates who have given us a lot of infra during setting up the peak and after that when the way was on the vein. But during the peak time, 
there were very few because there were import issues, there were other clearance issues, so there were very few help that was reaching. But we, you know, just because of this outreach, and I'm talking about the role of a civil servant in in today's world. Uh, just because of this outreach, we got 100 oxygen concentrators, about 10 ICU beds with monitors, 15, 20 non-invasive ventilators and BiPAP machines, which we equipped uh, either private hospitals who had the doctors or our PHCs and additional PHCs and CHCs. So, for example, our oxygen concentrators were sent, 5-5 five, five oxygen concentrators we sent to PHCs and additional PHCs and CHCs, which made sure that healthcare actually reached uh, grassroots levels and not only district hospitals. The BiPAP machines we needed skilled doctors to operate them. We were happy to act as a gap between uh, these contributors and say some private hospitals which had the doctors so that we could make sure that through convergence healthcare is reaching people somehow. Under the guidance of the Honorable uh, Chief Minister we also capped rates that private hospitals could charge and we could ensure it through various enforcement teams. So uh, I think our role as civil servants was redefined during this pandemic is one point I want to make. Another point I want to make is that governance really whether it was during testing, treating, tracking and tracing or whether it is through the vaccination system, uh, there is a shift in governance from people coming to hospitals and people coming to the system to the government set up going to villages and door to door. So, uh, Rajkamal sir uh, mentioned our approach in UP, where, uh, you know, I want to just add to that that uh, something that was done across the state with some minor changes to, in various districts were the concept of Migrani Samitis and rapid response teams and surveillance teams. You know, the WHO also recognized the effort in UP where a surveillance abhyan was carried out where you know, uh, through oximeters and uh, thermal uh, scanners, an entire door-to-door -door testing abhyan was carried out. This coupled with containment, coupled with testing of uh, symptomatic persons, coupled with distribution of medical medicine kits on the ground, really made sure that uh, administration reached the ground instead of vice versa. And now with vaccination, as Sir has said, what we are doing in Bijnor is that we have started from the northwest of the map and we have our static cent vaccination centers and we have our um, random, uh, randomly allocated vaccination centers which we take to the villages. So from the northwest, we are sweeping village by village and trying to cover vaccination uh, which is done you know, at a record pace. So we started with two, three thousand, four thousand uh, vaccinations being done across various categories as Rajmal sir mentioned whether it is for parents of, of above 12 or below 12 children, whether it is for uh, uh, members of the press, the judiciary, our frontline workers, all various categories we are taking them to the villages and GPS based tracking and mapping of our vaccination abhyan. Now these are uh, coupled with you know everything being monitored at a district level uh, IEEE, a command and control center, even something as small as giving uh, a CCTV feed of our district hospital to ensure that, you know, all doctors are visiting on time, cleanliness is being ensure, ensured, uh, food is given on time to patients. That was connected with the IEEE and monitoring was being done real time. Uh, we also did very small interventions. For example, we have through this social network that I spoke about, we have an India Food Bank network. That food bank network donated us 10,000 packets of biscuits, uh, you know, 1,000 packets of milk, powder, coffee, tea, candy, chocolates. That what we did was we got through our NRLM, as ma'am spoke about convergence between various departments. Through our NRLM, we set up BB canteens at all our L2 hospitals and we ensured that this material was given to them and all patients, apart from their regular food, were given you know, energy rich food like chocolate, milk, coffee, uh, three times a day, free of cost. And uh, it was a push to our NRLM canteens, BB canteens, and we could deploy these resources. Finally, I'd like to sp speak about a post COVID example in Bijnor where we converted after the first wave, where we tried to use 
a crisis and convert it into an opportunity was our bikes of bijnor system and I, i hope something like this uh, you know positive can come out of the second wave as well uh, we all read about the migrant labor uh, crisis that happened last year in bijnor a lot of the migrant labor was they were coming through cycles and these cycles were left and deserted and they were sent through special trains when i joined we saw these cycles deserted at police chokis we tried to give employment to local mistries get these cycles repaired and renovated and we envisioned and implemented a wage to wealth public bike sharing program so we tried to convert an opportunity a crisis into an opportunity this was uh, you know it has it is being used by general public where anyone can pick up a cycle from anywhere and leave it anywhere Uh, of course hoping that there is no third wave and hoping that we come out of this second wave we are already coming out of it but hoping that we come out of it uh, even stronger let's hope that if any loopholes were left in the second wave we can somehow use this private public convergence to equip our additional phcs phcs prepare for a third wave use this opportunity to upgrade our health infrastructure to attract hospitals doctors to uh, government hospitals as was done in bombay very efficiently by the uh, the municipal commissioner there and if at all there are any such crises we can try and convert them to opportunities through leadership and collaboration thank you so much thank you uh, thank you mr vikramaditya singh malik uh, as uh, rightly pointed out by you uh, that uh, there are challenges of the being a last speaker that most of the points are already covered by the time his turn comes but uh, every speaker comes with a new perspective and that is the beauty of the human uh, mind uh, thank you for sharing your uh, insights about uh, the covid handling of statistics in such a beautiful manner you spoke about a beautiful concept of uh, of course public private convergence and uh, you uh, you mentioned a very relevant point which is relevant to in particularly in today's context in 21st century india that uh, from the time of a time where the public used to go to the administration these days now the time has come that the administration is going to the public and getting administered the uh, crisis management program whether it is vaccination or whether it is education about the covid appropriate behavior or whether it is about the overall education of the general masses you also spoke about a beautiful concept of the uh, role of the civil servant being redefined by this crisis yes it's true that uh, this pandemic has taught us taught all of us a, a, a magnitude of such a crisis a crisis of such a magnitude has taught all of us some new paradigms of public governance as well then you were mentioning about the nigrani committee in each district of course there must have been certain minor tweaks, uh, tweaks here and there but the nigrani committee as uh, complemented by the world who is also uh, what mentioning here then uh, you mentioned about the real time monitoring uh, through live cctv feed into in the district command and control center wherein even the minute details were being brought to your notice and of course you mentioned about the interdepartmental coordination as well so uh, thank you so much uh, all the uh, respected speakers here i am totally out of time i had some questions from the public here and i was thinking to pose those questions to you but this is a live link as i already mentioned in the beginning of the program if i may request uh, other speakers uh, mr nitin singh bhadoria district magistrate almora and mr arun singh babu district collector uh, ahmedabad if they are still there to come on the camera please Madam Sonal Goel is still there, so I am delighted to see you because you are mentioning about uh, leaving early for a meeting. So thank you so much for being here, um, although the program is running late. So I will request uh, my backend team uh, to present with the speaker certificates. Yeah, the certificate of participation as a key speaker is for Madam Sonal Goel, Special Resident Commissioner, Government of Tripura in New Delhi. Thank you so much, Madam Sonal Goel, for putting the perspective. Then the, the next certificate is for Mr. Nitin Singh Bhadoria, District Magistrate, Almora, Government of Uttarakhand. Thank you, uh, Mr. Nitin Bhadoria, for coming here and sharing your perspective of COVID management in the despite the logistical challenges in the Hill District of Almora. The next certificate is for Dr. Raj, Raj Kamal Yadav, District Magistrate and District Collector, Bagpat, Government of UP. Thank you, Dr. Raj Kamal, for coming here and sharing your views. This certificate from Mr. Arun Mahesh Babu from Ahmedabad, District Development Officer, Ahmedabad, uh, who shared his perspective on COVID management at his district. 
of Ahmedabad. <coughs> and finally, the last uh, certificate for Mr. Bikramaditya Singh Malik, joint magistrate, Bisnor, who came with a fresh perspective of the crisis management and gave his own unique uh, ideas about managing the crisis so effectively. So with this, uh, we come to a conclusion of this uh, interesting panel discussion and a very relevant panel discussion in today's time, the management of COVID pandemic, particularly in the context of the recently uh, concluded second wave and also preparation for the third wave. We do hope that this uh, knowledge exchange program has come out with some new unique initiatives and new knowledge uh, sharing ideas which other regions of the country may like to imbibe from here. So this is the conclusion of this panel discussion, but not the conference. This is two days conference. We'll continue with other panel discussions going forward today as well as tomorrow. Thank you so much, all of you, respected ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.